Do you have a paranormal encounter you'd like to share with us? Send us an email with your story for a chance of it being featured on Weird World. The following incident took place in Victoria, Australia, where on April 7, 1966, a 19-year-old motor mechanic by the name of Gary Taylor lost his life when his car ran off the Bendigo St Arnold Road near Bealiba, which is 74 kilometres from the nearest town of Bendigo and 207 kilometres northwest of Melbourne, the capital of Victoria. Blood tests showed that Gary had not been drinking, and the local police could not understand how the young mechanic had left the road and crashed on a straight stretch of road. However, at the same time, they'd been receiving reports about unusual, unidentified lights in the sky. While still baffled over the death of the young mechanic, a man by the name of Ronald Sullivan, a steel construction worker who came to the police station with a story about a frightening experience it had at the exact same location three nights previously. Ronald had been driving his new Ford Falcon when all of a sudden his headlights started to bend to the right for no apparent reason. He said that if it followed the headlights, it would have run off the road and possibly suffered the same fate as Gary Taylor, but managed to stop the car before it crashed. Ronald then looked up, and in a nearby field, he could see strange lights that appeared to be all the colours of the spectrum. They looked like 5 centimetre diameter tubes that ran into a bright phosphorus glow on the ground. The lights then stretched up into the dark sky and vanished. Ronald then drove another 1 hour and 50 minutes to the small town of Witcherproof, where he had his headlights checked out and asked what would make them suddenly bend like that. The mechanic could offer no explanation and was told his lights were in perfect condition. Next day, Ronald returned to the location with the police where his headlights bent and then to the field where he saw the strange lights. As they were walking around the field, they came upon a depression in the ground that made a perfect circle that was 1.2 metres in diameter and 15 centimetres deep. They approached the farmer, who could offer no explanation as to what could have caused the circle, and it was no farming implement that he had ever used. Twelve years later, in February 1978, members of the Victorian UAP Research Society revisited the field and were able to photograph the round depression that was now barren and a bare ring where nothing grew. Apparently, many similar circles around the world have the same problem, where they remain sterile and devoid of any vegetation. It also seems that many similar events, such as strange lights and aerial phenomena, become part of a pattern, and the Benigo St Arnold Road case was no exception. On further research, they found that six years earlier, on the 30th of November 1972, another motorist had complained of unusual headlight behaviour, and moments later witnessed the strange object in a nearby field. On December the 7th, a local newspaper called the Murray Valley Standard reported an incident where a young mechanic had experienced disturbing problems while he was driving. Neville Maxwell was taking his car for a trial run along the road, where the engine started revving and his lights started to flash high and low as he reached the crest of a hill. As he got out of the car to check the engine, he witnessed an object that was the size of two cars. The base of the object was flashing green and purple lights. Now terrified, Neville Maxwell quickly went back into the car and ensured all the doors were locked, but he could not get his car to start and when he turned on the radio, all he heard was strange noises. His engine was completely dead, and it remained that way for another 40 minutes. From the safety of his locked car, he looked around and could still see the unusual object in the nearby field. All of a sudden, it rose up from the ground and made a whirring noise, and when it reached about 6 metres from the ground, shot off into the sky. After the object had completely vanished, he was able to start his engine again, without any problems, and slowly made his way home. The following day, the garage where he worked did a thorough inspection of the vehicle and found no problems whatsoever. In December 1989, farmers by the name of Nancy and Max Jolly and their son Stuart had taken strange photographs on their 9,000 hectare wheat property called West Park in the Mallee in northwest Victoria and were convinced that a gigantic craft had landed on their farm. Also, two close neighbours by the name of Brian Finch and Austin Grace had found something that they were unable to comprehend. They were riding their international combine harvester in the field to strip the crop from the elevated cabin on the machine. They suddenly found themselves looking down upon two large swirled circles of wheat that were about three metres in diameter 
surrounded by three smaller circles that were each about one metre in diameter. The Jollies believed that some huge force had left an imprint in the wheat. The ground inside the circles was rock hard, where the ground outside the circles was soft. The stalks on the circles of wheat were unbroken and swelled anti-clockwise, and everything looked as if it had been woven like a straw basket. The incident installed both fear and mystery for the Jolly family. Nancy Jolly also recalled an incident two years previously in November 1987 after viewing a series of strange lights over the property and on later inspection found that their 4,000 litre water tank had been totally drained overnight. A year later in 1988, Stuart Jolly was suddenly awoken by an extremely loud noise outside the bedroom window. It was so loud that Stuart feared it had shattered his eardrums. He described the sound like screaming jet engines revving up and down, along with the sound of thousands of cicadas. His dog ran away, and as he walked out of the house to look up at the sky, there was nothing to see. It was a loud sound coming from an empty sky. One year later, in 1989, at about 9pm, he could hear absolute pandemonium coming from the sheep paddock. As you walked across to the paddock, you observed their 700 ewes and lambs running around berserk in a total panic. He then looked up at the sky and saw a yellow light that appeared to be pulsating and making a high-pitched sound. He could see that it was a yellow light and the noise that was sending them crazy. He then looked across to his neighbour, Brian Finch's farm, and the same panic was happening to his livestock as they were trying to run away from something. The light then slowly vanished. When his wife and son arrived home an hour later, they went out to the field with torches and came across a wedge-tailed eagle that had a wingspan of about two metres stumbling around the field in a panic and appeared to be in shock. It looked totally disorientated and appeared incapable of lifting off. It had lost its sense of balance, but fortunately, the following morning, it had gone and must have recovered. There appeared to have been much activity in the Mallee, where another neighbour called Aileen Casey reported a mysterious light hovering over her dam. A pilot by the name of John O'Shettle then asked to fly over the farm to take photographs. John observed hundreds of swirling circles that extended across a vast region of many of the neighbouring farms. He later said that there was no way the circles could have been a hoax, as they could only have been seen from a great height, such as in a plane or high above the ground in the cabin of a harvester. Practical jokers would have found it impossible to compress the soil into a rock-hard state, as well as the accuracy of the circles. The incidences that took place in Victoria has happened all around the world, but nobody knows why, and is even the experts baffled.